Hello my schoolers, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. Right here in this channel, we'll be solving the topic log reading. We're going to consider laws under log reading. We're going to consider those things that we refer to as equations regarding log reading, as well the use of log reading table to get your mantis up. Alright, so all of this we'll be doing together. I believe this section is going to be very, very educative and interesting as well. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, because we'll be right back in this session. You are warmly welcome back to my school YouTube channel. All right, so for this video segment, what we're doing is we are going to cut through the topic log reading, still under number and numeration. So we are going to look into what led to the invention of log reading, okay? The laws, the properties, or the rules regarding log reading, okay? The use of log reading into sort of equations like this, okay? The use of log reading tables to determine your mantissa. All right, so let's start with why log reading came into existence. Okay, this is actually to simplify complex arithmetic operations, all right? So log reading was introduced, okay, so that um, you can transform, you know, multiplicative process to additive process, okay? You are going to see that applied in one of the rules or some of the rules or some of the questions that we'll be tackling all along in this video, okay? So what are the laws and properties attached to log reading of course i'm skipping definition but i'm going to bring it to you right now so how would you define log reading so we can define log reading okay as the index to which that particular base must be raised so that it can be equal to a particular number this is what i mean so let's say for instance i have this okay so we are talking about the index to which this base four must be raised and that index is 3 so that it can give you 64. So that is the definition for logarithm. Of course, you can find several de definitions in several textbooks, good materials, even online as well. So let's go into some properties or laws of logarithm. Okay, right here we have the product law or the product property. We have the quotient or the ratios law. Okay, we have the powers, we have the identity. Of course, we have so much more. We have the reciprocal, we have the inverse. Of course, we have the zero okay and so much more like that i'm going to deal with the remaining uh, okay the remaining operations or the remaining properties regarding log reading okay so we have four here i'm going to talk about six more okay in the fuller session of the video so do not forget to subscribe so let's look at the first law or the first uh, property so we have the product property okay we have log base x a b you know for you to have a b that is a times b Remember that the times will change to plus. So what is going to be will just be log base x a plus log base x raised to power b. So you can see. So we have a times b. Okay, that times will change to plus. Okay, so let's say the base x here is 10. Or let me say it's 2. Okay, so this will tell us that log base 2 a, then log base 2 b you can see so this is what is going to happen there so if we are having all over okay you can say the quotient or the ratios all right all over means divide so divide will change towards minus so this tells me log base x of b minus log base x of c okay we see that okay very very easy okay so We've dealt with the products and the quotient or ratios property. Okay, so let's look at the powers uh, property. So you can see log base x, then we have of c, then the c is now raised to the power of d. So how do we make this work? Very easy. Let me write the presentation. Okay, so you can see this power that we have here will just come right behind this whole expression. So we are going to have d multiplies this okay so this is the power law so if the power i have here we just move right behind it so let's let's say for instance i have log base 2 
uh, let me say yes, 2 raised to the power 5. Okay, that would just be, the 5 comes here, 5 log base 2 raised to the power 2. Okay, so recall that log base 2, 2 in log base 2 is 1. Alright, 10 in log base 10 is 1. 4 in log base 4 is 1. Okay, so 2 raised to 2 in log base 2 is what? 1. So 1 times 5 still gives us 5. So that is the expression that this law is trying to share with us. So let's go on to the fourth law. Remember that you can play back this video clip as many times as required, okay, so that you can get familiar with this concept, okay? So we have the identity property, okay? You can see this is just very, very easy, just like the way we use it to define the term logarithm, okay? So I have... So that's one that we have here, the half put that we have here as one is the index to which this must be raised to give you this. Okay, so if you want to see this, just the way we used to express it in the exponent form, so that will be b equals a raised to power one. Okay, this is all we are looking for. So, like I said, we still have more laws to tackle in the fuller session of this video. So let's go into the logarithmic equations or equations regarding logarithm, okay? So let's say, for instance, we have something like this. Log base 3, x squared plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. So what do you do? Remember, you can invite one of the laws that I've mentioned earlier, okay, to tackle this. So what do you do? You send this 3 here, okay? So what index would these three have to produce this equation? And that index is what? Zero. So anything raised to the power zero is one. That is your zero property regarding the laws of logarithm. Okay, so we have this. Right? Three raised to the power zero, that is one. Okay? Right then, then I collect like terms, I send the one in, then after doing that, I can factorize to get my answer. Okay, so now let's go to the use of logarithm tables. So remember that one of the purposes why we established logarithm or why we introduced or why logarithm was um, invented, okay, is to turn multiplicative process to additive process. Okay, so like for instance, if I have this, All right, so this is the left hand side, this is the right hand side. So on the left hand side of this, okay, so you can see that right here we have the decimal point, isn't it? This is a decimal part, all right, which, which we can refer to as the mantissa. Okay, and this is your integral part. You know, integral is from the word integers, okay? You know, integers can be, they are just whole number, okay? They can be positive in value, they can be negative in value, they can even be zero, okay? So this left-hand side is your integral part, and this right-hand side is your mantissa, your decimal part, okay? So here you can tap out your characteristics, and this is where we have our mantissa. So like, for instance, there are ways that you can get your characteristic, okay? When you want to use it to um, solve using a logarithm table. Okay, you can do that by using the inspection or the observation method. Okay, or you can use your standard form method. Okay, so if you want to use the inspection or observation method, what you just need to do is you have to count the numbers, okay, that we have in the integral part. So how many numbers do we have? One, two, three. Okay, then minus one. Okay, that tells you that the characteristic here is two. Isn't it? So if, for instance, I have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay, what will be my characteristic here by mere inspection or observation? I just count the number I have in the left hand side or in the integral part, okay, to determine my characteristic. So that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, okay, that tells you that the characteristic here will be 4. Okay, so let's, let me try and use the standard form method to determine my characteristic. So for this, I would just say, if I want to convert this to standard form, 1, 2, 2.345 times 10 raised to power 2. 
or it is from 2.345 times 100. Okay, 10 raised to power 2 is still 100. So you can see your characteristics is the index of the 10 or the power of the 10. Okay, the same thing is going to happen here for this. Let's see if we are going to get 4. So let's change this to standard form, right? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. That will be 5.6789664 times 10 raised to power 4. Okay, so if you want to make it move back to this point, you just see 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright, so you can see that the index or the power of 10 or the exponent of 10 gives you your characteristic. Okay, so we are going to solve operations regarding the use of logarithmic table, logarithmic equations, okay, the other properties of logarithm so all you just need to do is to subscribe you may ask how do i subscribe just click on the link in the description below it's going to take you to the my school website there we have provided with guidelines on how you can get access to this full video content please do not forget to hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we put up the next video lessons just for your comfort